This is Oliver Gavin, five times a winner at Le Mans with Corvette, and also my friend. We sometimes go cycling together if we're ever in the UK at the same time. I, by the way, am very much not a Le Mans winner. He retired from racing last year, but hasn't stood still since then. Oh no, he's put his reputation to good use, teaching people how to get the most from their Corvettes. That means he's like Gucci or Yves Saint Laurent, he's got his name on some clothing because he's got the Oliver Gavin Driving Academy, which is based here at Boxburg, which is a bit like Millbrook in the UK, but in Germany. It's owned by Bosch, they do all their testing here and usually have lots of prototypes running around. But today we've got lots of Corvettes running around, which is great fun. Now we know all sorts of tests here and sort of things that help people explore the limits of the car, but what I really want is to be told what I'm doing wrong. Because see, I've done these things in the past and it's great, it's really good fun, but people are generally sort of quite nice and they just go, yep, that's fine and don't want you pushing too hard, but well, he's a friend. He's gonna be honest, brutally honest perhaps. In fact, I'm not sure I can really take honesty, but we shall see and I'm looking forward to it. I think, can I take honesty? Can I? Let's go and do some of that. <laughs> wow, this is steep. It really is steep, because it's the outside lane of Boxburg's 3km bowl, which has an angle of 65% at the top. The OGDA uses the latest C8 Corvette Singrays, which have a 6.2 litre naturally aspirated V8, producing 495 brake horsepower and 470 pounds foot of torque, sending it all to the rear wheels via an 8-speed DCT. If you want to see a review, just click on the link in the description down below. I've bagged myself a rather fetching rapid blue coupe with the Z51 pack. Anyway. First up, a bit of damp drifting to start the day. It was okay. We had some oversteer. Some oversteer on the dry. Didn't really hold it that well, but we'll get better. Go to all the way on the PTM. Oh, it's gone back down again. Yeah. Oh. It's okay. Ah, there we go. Yeah. That'll be uh, it. Yeah, because uh, it looked like it. You, you kind of caught. We were there, and yeah, then and then it stopped. So that, that wasn't my fault then. This is not this your is fault. Not my no, fault. Not, not my, not your, nothing. Not, not his my... fault. It wasn't his fault. So yeah. give it another crack. Come on, talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we've got everything off. Yeah, look, I've got it. Perfect. Yeah, all right. That's the first spin of the day done. So we're clearly going with the uh, Gilles Villeneuve approach here of uh, find the limit and then work back from it. I should introduce him really, this is Dennis on the, uh, uh, on the radio here. I can't talk back to him, he can only talk to me. Uh, but um, yeah, he's the one giving the advice and the instructions and um, the praise or the um, damning comments. Lift off and power, power, power. Yeah, yeah. Come on, 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 Nice! <laughs> that was really good drift already, very good feeling. Wow, well, I'm impressed, very good. <laughs> Next one, Los Kids. He's impressed. Nice to prove I can do it. Let's see how critical Ollie can be. Rubbish, mate. What do you think you're doing? Not bad, mate. I'll give you about a 7 out of 10 for that. 7, seven, seven out of 10, there we go. Okay, yeah. What, so, so how can I improve then? Uh, just keep sliding it for longer. Long, longer. Longer, yes. Of, do I do a second lap? Is that is that what you want? Well, maybe you need to come back and just stop here just for a little bit. <laughs> don't, don't, don't keep going round and round and round. Yeah. But no, mate, you got it going pretty well. All right. Good, yeah. Good. It was, um, you got in, yeah. you got the front loaded, yeah. you unhooked the rear and you had it going and it was just, it was like it had a little bit too much counter steer, just needed to just take that little bit of counter steer off and it would have just kept going really nicely throughout. But. Top of the class. <laughs> Seven out of ten. There we go. Let's see if we can do better. Left steel angle and power, power, yes, yes. Bit more, bit more, bit more, bit more, bit more. Yeah, there you go, perfect. Yeah, now you have it again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah, yeah.
at Millbrook in the UK generally. Right, here we go, let's see what the um, performance test time says. Right, so foot hard on the brake, three and a half. Seconds to 62? Yeah. So 3.8. 3.8, is that what you got? Yeah. Did you just call me fat for not being faster than that? Uh, no, I didn't. Is that what you, I, did, I did, did not you, Did I you did say not I'm not looking quite as no, chill? Is that why? I'm carrying extra you, weight. You That's why it's not. Much. I, I realised that, you know, it's wow. been a bit tricky on the bike and the running, so. Sorry. Okay. 3.6, we're looking for. 3.6, okay. Away you go. In the end, 3.8 was the best I could extract. I think a warmer day would have helped. Anyway, after practicing gaining speed, it was time to try wiping it all off again as quickly as possible with the break and avoid test. I managed to stop from 158 kilometers per hour whilst dodging the cones. Really, you just have to rely on the ABS and keep the steering inputs as minimal as possible. After that, there was a sort of combination of classes one and two with a bit of linked drifting on the slippery Parve surface, managing the weight transfer of the mid-engine C8. All the while, I could sense the watchful eyes of Ollie critiquing me but this was all really leading up to the main event. So we're off to the handling circuit now. I think this is where I'm going to get to try and keep up with Mr. Gavin. He's probably going to hurl a load of abuse at me for being slow, for not being a five-time Le Mans winner. <laughs> Equally, if I do keep up, he's just going to say that you know the Oliver Gavin Driving Academy has clearly been doing a fantastic job and um, he's going to take all of the credit for me being vaguely quick. We're using the outer handling circuit, which fairly obviously I've never driven before, so Ollie patiently gets me up to speed for a couple of laps. Right, Oliver Gavin is in the orange Corvette up ahead. I'm going to try and keep on. Okay, we are good to go now. Excellent. Okay, we'll just build it up. Just do a couple of laps like this. A little bit of a breathe here. Coming through, we use a little bit of this exit curb. Not too much. And then over the crest here, just got to be a little bit careful of the car going light. Nicely on the brakes. Using plenty of this kerb on the way through. Using all the kerb on the way now. Add a bit more. <laughs> Not bad. Doing a nice job. So far. Yeah. Uh, I might have to start focusing a bit more here on my steering and my position on the road. Build it up. Nice and progressively using plenty. Curb. I'm trying not to shower your car with rocks. <laughs> Lots of curb on the exit. Like that, excellent. Just keep the rear of the car with weight on it. Back on the throttle. Plenty of throttle off the corner. Using the curb at the apex. Bit of exit curb. Again, I'll try and keep off the rocks as I come over the crest onto the brakes. Nice and progressively trying to keep it straight. Trying to lose the rear on the way in, back on the throttle. Excellent. Plenty of kerb at these two corners here and over the exit kerb. That's nice. Good stuff, Henry. So losing the rear a little bit on the way in. We're just adding the lock. Apex, power on. Awesome. Come on, Ollie. At this point, Ollie did actually start trying a little bit, and we had a couple more laps at an even faster pace. The things I noticed were that I was using every inch of track, and more sometimes, when following Ollie's lines, and also that I would lose a yard or so through the long left-hander, asking too much of the front end as I tried to stay in touch. By and large though, I just about managed to keep up. It is easier being able to follow, obviously. Not leading, but um, yeah. It's good, just try and be really smooth. It's a car that really rewards you being smooth, I think. So, yeah, it's cool. Did I get you with enough stones? <laughs> oh, jeez, it's, like, oh, it's flying everywhere. Oh, good I times. More and more cuts and yeah, I was, I was taking you a little bit more curb, a little bit more grass, a little bit more road on the exit. You're pushing me, pushing me, like, ah, oh, losing it on the way into the corners a little. Oh, that was good fun. Uh, great times, good times. <laughs> But now for the crucial bit. What could I do better? Why was I losing those yards in the long corner? Time for the honesty. That was 
a huge amount of fun. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> was it all right? I mean, tell me, tell me you were going more than like five tenths and kind of, you know, it was gonna, we well, used did, a lot of the track. I did use a lot of track and I did have to put the radio down at one point, just put both hands on the wheel. But no, 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 absolutely. It was a lot of fun. I think we got it to the limit. Uh, there's maybe a couple of little spots that, that can improve on. I think we've had a little chat about this that. Is, this is what I want. So, because like, when we're going going quickly, you think this is all great, but then it's just that that last little bit, particularly the big bottom left hand corner. I could, I know, I'm not, you know, it's just yeah. losing the odd foot through there and stuff. Yeah. So it was all about that transition. So you could break and you could start to roll the speed, but it's then the committing back to the throttle and loading up that rear ax rear axle again. That was just a little bit just couldn't quite pick up the throttle to then drive off down the straight. And so you're, then you're just losing those couple of feet, those, that, that little bit of, of distance to me. That transition from brake back onto throttle again. And it's a classic thing, isn't it? That is the bit where a really good racing driver you, makes up time well, over it, other it, people. It, it, it is, it is and, and, but I think that you're, we're not comparing apples to apples here. You know, I've, I'm someone who's spent an awful lot of time in this car. I've got so many miles under my belt with this. Uh, for you to come in on a circuit you don't know and uh, to be pushing me as hard as you did, I think it represents you're a very good driver. You can push me very hard very quickly, but I think the, the car itself gave you the confidence to yeah. do it. And, and yes, there, there's that transition point you know, when you're just loading the car into the corner, you're just trying to roll the speed, and then you're trying to pick up the throttle, that there is the key point for winning that little bit more lap time. But, you know, that's something that we can explore further down the road. You know, we can bring you along to a track event, a Lorna Duran, at some point in the, in the future, very near future, hopefully, and we'll have you back here at Boxburg, because we'd love to have you back for a, the second instalment and then see how you progress. <laughs> That'd be good. You've been far too nice. You ruined the video now. That's it. That's it. There we go. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ollie. <laughs>